but I hope you're ready for some cosmic vinyl. Um, God, welcome YouTube, welcome vinyl community, welcome all who, uh, everybody's welcome here in the cosmic realm. Man, first I'd just like to say thank you so much to all the new subscribers and all you who comment, you guys are there every video. And all of the new people who are laying down comments and thumbs up, man, you're you're just making my year, man. I freaking love you guys, man. I'm having so much fun making videos right now. It's not it, it's a just a great time to be part of the vinyl community. And we're just gonna take over the galaxy. You watch, baby. Here's what we're listening to. This this is something I picked up a while back to add to fill a hole in my bubblegum collection. It's this clown's um, Ringling Barnum and Bailey. What the hell is it? Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey. Check that out. This is this gatefold is nightmare fuel to say the least. Look at that. It's fucking great. I'll talk more about that in another video. But that's what. That's the. The, the happy stuff we were listening to in the intro there. All right, so I got to get down to it. I got 10 albums to show. So what this is, is an, this is the first of another three-part series. Uh, yeah, I got one going with uh, uh, six 70s, early 70s bangers that metalheads would like. This is going to be, I pulled 30 albums from the Cosmic Collection, right? And it's going to be 10 on each video. And it's all the early psychedelic records that I added to the collection uh, when I started like uh, getting back into uh, purchasing vinyl and listening to vinyl again. So some of these are going to be real common stuff that you see all the time. I got to tell you, um, when I lived in Fort Dodge, Iowa, we didn't have a record store. I would have to make treks like an hour and a half, two hours away to um, Des Moines to get records, but I would get stuff at thrift stores, antique stores, uh, online. I didn't know shit about shit. I I, I got my uh, my psychedelic knowledge from watching channels like Dan from Dots and Loops and Hog's Ear Report and uh, just all those great psychedelic channels. They were which there was many, and they were great stuff, man. I loved it. All right, so hey, let's get Chuck. into this, man. Oh, you guys want to do Big Chuck? I already got one open, but I'm, I'll do one, man. Let's just toast to great classic rock music. Man, It just it's just got so much soul and so much uh, oh, emotion. It just gets you going, you know what I'm saying? So let's toast to great classic rock and roll. Oh, yes, yes, my good friend, of course. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Okay. All right, first one. This is something I picked up early, early on. 
um, at a little collectible store in Fort Dodge. Now, I didn't know anything about this album. Now, I had heard of the band before. The band is the incredible string band, but I only knew of their album, um, uh, 5,000 Spirits and the Layers of an Onion, well, they, them and their titles. This one's called Liquid Acrobat as, what is it? Liquid Acrobat as regards the air. Now this is, uh, I think the album that came maybe after that one, it was, um, this was released in 71 on the Island uh, record label. And it's not really a psychedelic cover, but the band picture on the back is really cool, man. I dig it, and then it's pretty uneventful gatefold there, but um, this is probably their most electric instrumentation of uh, all their albums up to this point, because they're kind of a, a folky psych, um, more progressive, I guess. This has some progressive leanings to it. Uh, but yeah, this just the lyrics are just really quirky, and there's male female vocals. Um, it, the trippy first track is called uh, "Talking of the End." Um, it, it's a pretty cool album, man. And I was glad to pick it up and add it to the collection. Um, now this next one, you're definitely gonna recognize. This is one that um, you see around, or you used to see it around quite a bit. Um, and that's this uh, crazy world of Arthur Brown. Take in that cover, baby. That's freaking amazing. Um, I, this is released in 1968, um, and it's an original on the track label. If we can see that there, the track label. Uh, this is an original I found, and it's in great condition, too. Look at that that cover man it just makes you want to grab it and pick it up this album was co-produced by the great uh pete townsend of the who that's so crazy man i love it and it also features uh the fantastic vincent crane on the hammond organ man and the hammond organ is a huge part of uh arthur brown's sound man it's just right up front it's just so killer man uh it, it just adds a, a, a great uh element to the music as well as the brass that's on here kind of adds another trippy dimension to it Ooh. now vincent crane of course was uh went on to be an atomic rooster you guys know what i think about the atomic rooster love him man but um, yeah, this is, uh, Brown's vocals are just, I mean, they're scary good. I mean, like operatic scary. It's so, and I kind of mean that in a literal way, because when I was a little cosmonaut, um, I got to tell you, when I heard this song on the radio, the song Fire, Fire, da 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 I am the god of hell. I, I used to kind of give me the, the willies a little bit, man. And then when I finally seen what he looked like with his face paint and his fire helmet and whatnot, it added a whole new level of queasy fear to me when I was a little kid. So I'm not scared anymore, though. I'm not scared. Ah! <laughs> Great stuff. Arthur Brown. Now this next one is one that I picked up in Las Vegas. It's on the uh, Atco label there. Um, I picked it up in this little record store in Las Vegas. It, it was this little brick building sat in the middle of this parking lot, right? And it was so unassuming, it was called Record City. But uh, you guys are gonna recognize this one as it's a one of the classic rock staples and that's cream disraeli gears perhaps one of the greatest psychedelic album covers of all time uh released in 1967 this power trio of bruce baker and of course mr eric clapton uh, who's a legendary guitar player look at that back cover too it's freaking fantastic man um 
My favorite song on here is called The Ballad of Brave Ulysses. Uh, it's the opening track on side two. Uh, just a killer tune. Uh, also, I love Sunshine of Your Love. Uh, when I was in my old band, Section 7, we used to cover that song. Um, and it was one of the songs that I brought to the But yeah, um, this is, I mean, what else can you say about this? It's just so great, man. And then this next one, now, you don't see this one around very often. It's more of a sunshine pop or uh, pop psych. But this is Rose, the Rose Garden uh, featuring the track Last, Tra uh, Last Plane to London. Uh, great kind of psychedelic cover, though. And there's the band looking kind of like, uh, they're from L.A., but they and they look like they're from, you know, that Laurel Canyon scene. But check out the chick. Uh, there are male, female vocals on this. Um, but, yeah, this is in pretty rough shape. It's got the tape and stuff, man. But um, they had that top 20 hit with Next Plane to London on it. Uh, very birds influenced here. Uh, in fact, they do a couple of Gene Clark compositions on here uh, till today and I believe long time. But there's a picture of the band on the back there. Kind of folky, kind of sunshine pop. Always brings a smile to my face though when I listen to it. So, <laughs> And speaking of uh, female vocalists, whoa, wait till you see this, man. This is uh, Shocking Blue. Um, I love this record, man. This is so great. Every time I see this album, it always the cover is always like this with the ring wear and the snowstorm of, of cover wear there. But God, look at Mariska Veres, the, the lead singer. She is absolutely gorgeous. Look, just take her in for a second there. Now this is released in 69, originally on the Pink Elephant label. I believe the one I have here is on the Colossus label. These guys were a Dutch rock band, part of the Niederbeat scene. And I, and I guess, you know, between them and Golden Earring, they were probably the two most successful bands out of that scene, man. But this features songs like uh, Love Buzz, later covered by Nirvana. Uh, Send Me a Postcard and Venus. Um, kind of, a, they got some Eastern guitar sounds on this. Uh, yeah, this is such a killer record, man. You used to see it all the time. Don't see it as much anymore. But that was an early one I picked up. Now this next record has the distinction of being one of the first records, the first psych records I ever picked up. It's on the, uh, uh, magenta and baby poop colored Atco label there. <laughs> and that's this album right here, Vanilla Fudge. Man, this album is so amazing. Man, this thing is outstanding. Uh, cool cover there, uh, picture of the band. Look how young Carmine Apathy looks there. And he's one of my favorite drummers, man. This is great. Released in 67. Uh, just, you know, mostly cover songs. They have like three originals on here. Um, but yeah, it opens, opens and closes with these killer covers of Beatles songs. Uh, that opens with Ticket to Ride and ends with Eleanor Rigby. Um, just killer musicianship. Uh, heavy Hammond organ. The vocal harmonies are just a, uh, out there, man. Just beautiful. 
Uh, and of course, the lead singer on the, in this is uh, just so great. Uh, the great song on this is You Keep Me Hanging On. It's got this great intro, uh, and it just breaks down into like this Eastern guitar sound. Um, it was so good that it, that Quentin Tarantino featured it in one of the most amazing film scenes uh, ever put to celluloid. And that's from the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Man, I love that friggin' movie, man. Uh, Eastern guitar, pounding drums, old Carmine, King Carmine getting after it. This is dramatic, it's epic, it's a great album, get it. Used to see it all the time, man. Used to see it in bargain bins and stuff. Not so much anymore, though, man. Um, here's another one I used to see a lot around. In fact, I've got a couple copies of this. Probably one of the greatest... Um, this is like legendary uh, progressive rock album. It, it's, a, again, a staple of classic rock. And that's uh, the Moody Blues, uh, Days of Future Past. Um, now, this one's released in 1967 on the Duram label. Uh, let's see if you can get that picture of the band there. Now, I showed the Moody Blues number one um, not, in a few videos back. And it was two years between that album and this album. And man, what a difference two years makes, man. This is like a totally different band. Uh, of course, you added a, a, like John Lodge and um, Justin Hayward to the mix. And um, now this is a band that's like uh, was struggling um, financially and struggling to get noticed, man. And they had this chance to do this... Um, uh, like add their music to like this epic orchestral uh, album. So they that's that's how this album came about, and it's just beautiful, man. And it's trippy and dreamy. It takes you on a journey. Um, I, I love this record, man. I mean, Nights in White Satin is going to go down. It, it'll people will still be. Uh, talking about that song forever. It'll never go away, man. It's great. And then uh, I love this album, man. Do not overlook this. What a great album. And now this one is another one that I got for a steal at this antique shop. Um, it's And some people love it. Some people hate it. I think it's brilliant. And that's their Satanic Majesty's Request by the Rolling Stones with the great lenticular cover there. Um, I'm sure I'm not gonna be able to get it to work in the camera there, but uh, you know that they were, they initially, they were gonna release it with the whole cover covered with the lenticular, but I mean, this was this was too, too expensive uh, as it was, let alone doing one that covered the whole thing, so. But yeah, this is um, so great, man. Uh, I think the title is like a play on words, like from the uh, text on the inside of a British passport. Um, I, I love it, man. Great psychedelic cover. Look at the in, uh, the gatefold. Take that all in, man. Uh, they, I mean, they throw everything in here. You've got Mellotron. You've got strings. You've got African rhythms. Um, this is... This is the Stones getting crazy psychedelic here. Great songs on it, man. Um, I love every song on this album, no question. Uh, the Stones, their Satanic Majesty's Request. I think I got that for like a few bucks. Guy didn't know what he had. Now this is a band that you never see talked about in the vinyl community. Um, it is just an underrated band, um, and it's on, this is my reissue on the Rhino label, and the Rhino inner sleeve is great. Look at all those great items you can pick up, but this is Naz. Uh, this is their first album featuring the great Todd Rundgren. Um, again, I love him or hate him, you cannot deny his talent as a as an artist or a you know a producer or whatever but this was released in 68 on the screen gems columbia label um the opening track open my eyes is 
one of, I mean, it's one of my, not just one of my favorite psych songs, but one of my favorite songs of all time. This thing just feels like it's ahead of its time with great power pop tracks. I mean, I, I can't explain it. If I was listening to it for the first time, I think uh, much of it was like just new, just put on the radio, man. It rocks, it's hooky, the guitars are uh, just freaking outstanding. The drums are just mind blowing, man. The drummer on, on this in this band is incredible. Um, yeah, killer bass lines, vocal harmonies, kind of Beatlesque. Um, yeah, I love this, and it has a a slower original version of uh, Todd Rundgren's "Hello, It's Me." Um, that Todd it was a huge hit for Todd when he went solo. Now I couldn't. I bought that at the same time I bought this one, so I'm going to show this one too. And this is Naz's second album, Naz Naz, I think it's called. But uh, really cool cover there, man. Check out their get their outfits on this. And look at look at young Todd there. Look at young Toddy. Um, but yeah, this is great too, man. This is um, released in '69. And check this out. This is an original, and it's 1969, and it's released on this deep reddish pink album, and that label goes right with the colored vinyl. Now, I mean, you see colored vinyl all the time now, but you, back then, I, I feel like it probably would have been pretty unique to see. Uh, Well-written tracks on this. You can tell they're elevating their game. Although there was a lot of infighting going on behind the scenes here. Uh, in fact, this is their last uh, proper album, really. Um, but it rocks. Again, great power pop hooks. Uh, great drumming. Again, God, that guy's fills and his runs are just crazy. But Todd uh, Rundgren took over the production duties on this probably to his bandmates dismay as um, you know really you know as soon as a guy in the band starts isolating himself and starts overdubbing other guys tracks you know it's the end of the road for that band in fact they're le they were gonna make that a double album so the leftover stuff from that is uh, was put into Naz 3 which I gotta get that album man I never see it man never I gotta find it though. So yeah, this is the first installment of a, a three-part series of my early psych albums uh, that I picked up when I didn't have a clue, but I knew enough to grab, you know, and I watched enough uh, VC videos, and a lot of this stuff back then could be had for cheap, and that was a big thing for me back then. So um, yeah, guys, I'm going to see you out with another drink here. man um enjoy your weekend man and you'll probably see another video before the weekend's out we've been doing double dips on the weekend so love you guys man and again uh hit the subscribe button man uh give us a like by hitting the thumbs up uh ring the notification bell man we are pushing forward to a thousand subs we gained 20 subs last week. We're at about 920, man. And I appreciate every one of you out there, man. Um, love you. Have a, have a great weekend. See you soon.